clients of mine has decided to not work. Uh, symptoms were that the refrigerator was not getting any cool air and the freezer drawer had a lot of ice in the back. It was uh, frosty on the outside and you can see like snow kind of pouring out of the grill. So most likely culprit is going to be something called the thermostat. And this is not, this is actually the wrong part. This is actually the whole wiring harness. The only thing that you really need is this part and it comes with the two wires, the two, uh, the orange and the brown leads. Uh, that's the real replacement. So I'll post a link to that. Uh, this is a KitchenAid refrigerator. It's a KRB X 109 EWH, but it's probably very similar to Maytag's or some of the other brands that are under the uh, Maytag name, maybe from Whirlpool. I think Whirlpool owns it. Anyway, so we're just going to replace this guy first. And another thing that might be wrong is that the damper switch up top is not opening and shutting, letting the cold air up on the top. So uh, that could be another culprit for why the cold air is not getting into the refrigerator. But definitely just the, the I, amount of ice that's coming out of the grill work in the freezer compartment is a telltale sign that your thermometer is croaked. Okay, first you need to take the freezer door off and to do that you need to take the baskets out. Uh, this is a little different from the video I saw so I'll just give you some pointers. Basically right here is a bolt. You have to take that bolt off and then it'll loosen up how loose it is, right? It's on a tracking system so the more the KitchenAid models have a track and the wheel has a uh, has a gear so it runs up and down on that gear so you need to essentially take that off loosen this piece off then in the back you're going to have to pry this thing off and it makes an unholy sound and you think like you broke it but really it's a tab that sort of slips in and at a slight angle okay, you can see that my freezer bottom is filthy my dog is a pig but anyway, unlike uh, some of the other videos you may have seen, this KitchenAid actually has some sort of handy brackets here and quick release. So what you do is you see this little red, white thing, see how it snaps back, go here, push it down, snaps back. That allows the track to pull out and watch yourself on these rails because it's pretty greasy. Sorry for the unsteady hands here. And you can just basically just start tugging it out like that. You see how it's moving out. Okay, first of all, I cleaned the bottom of the freezer tray. I mean, basically, yeah, it's a great opportunity to clean your freezer and I can't believe how much dog hair just gets in this thing. So I'm just gonna point out, you can get telltale signs of a uh, uh, the freezing back here and the sort of the plugging up and the thermostat not working and defrosting by just looking at these back vents they're completely plugged up with ice and uh, either means that the thermostat is not working to turn on the defroster or your defroster unit itself is borked but I guess we're just going to test this out too uh, by taking that back panel off. Before we do that, of course we have to take off these tracks right here. Same old quarter inch socket wrench. Just take all these bolts off. Of course you have to do it on the other side and you have the three other bolts here. Same thing, quarter inch. One nice thing about this job is that almost all the sort of screws, machine screws are a quarter inch. However, it makes things confusing if you just sort of throw them all together in a big pile. So I sort of tape them to the componentry itself so that they're just there when I need them. And they don't get mixed up with any other quarter inch because they're different lengths. And then next step, we're going to again take our socket and start taking this one, that one, that one, and that one. And I don't have an ice maker, so I don't have to remove the uh, ice tray unit. 
Okay, so now that my bolts are off of the back panel, and I jimmied it loose, <laughs> I'm using a uh, crab scooper thing, crab picker. Anyway, to get you have to get this thing off, right? This little grill, the fan grill. And uh, unlike the other uh, Whirlpool devices, refrigerators, there's a little push tab, so you have to kind of push down and then yank it out. So I did it already, but I can show you what that pull tab is. That's the only thing that's really holding this guy up there. So just wanted to let you know. Again, it always sounds horrific when you're doing it, but you just have to brute force this thing off. But make sure you push that tab down pretty low. So one handy thing that I did was I plugged the unit back in and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't the fan or in addition to the thermostat the fan was not working so you can see it's spinning there so the fan is good and that's the thing that pushes the cold air up into your refrigerator which would have cooled it except that this whole unit is frozen solid it's going to take like a lot of heat gunning to get this stuff off but your thermostat will be right behind that plastic thing there. In addition, you'll probably have to take this backing off so that you can access the uh, drain tub underneath the uh, drain plug. Because uh, when the refrigerator defrosts, it pees into this drain pan down here. But with this amount of ice, it's probably going to get pretty overwhelmed, so you want to uh, have a towel down there, maybe even a siphon to suck it out. You want to drain it constantly, or else you're going to damage your floor. Okay, so this is pretty borked up here. It's, it's almost glacial. So I have this handy heat gun. It's a little more efficient than a hair dryer. And if you want to sort of just get this done fast, and I'll have it defrost for five days straight. Because, I mean, look at, look at that ice. I mean, that's insane. Now, again, once you start melting this and you finally uh, release the drain plug, wherever that is in this mess, you're going to get a lot of water in that back part, in that drain pan. So, of course, you should be checking that constantly once you sort of you know, get a good chunk of this defrosted, so. Here I go, and I put it on a medium setting because there's a lot of plastic around here. It's gonna take forever. I'll just to let you know, circuitry doesn't like a lot of heat, so make sure that you don't expose your wires to a higher heat. You'll probably have to set it back to like two or three so that the wires don't have problems. I've done this on a motorcycle once. Totally fried the solenoid because of the heat. And the bike wasn't even on. So I got a little frustrated because this is solid ice. So uh, I basically started doing a little bit of ice carving around this. You don't want to hit that for sure. But you know, maybe just like a little whack here little whack there and you get big chunks that sort of fall off like that and that might help speed up the process okay so I don't know if you can see this but there is water coming down the drain plug hole which is a good sign that's not frozen at least but you know you're gonna have to start extracting that probably pretty regularly or else it's gonna float on your floor so, uh, I don't know where I got this crazy syringe. The last time I saw a syringe like this, somebody was putting a horse down, an old horse. But uh, anyway, you can hook up an old hose to it and then just kind of suck it up and dispose of it so that you don't get this on your floor, which will then cause lots of damage to your woodwork. While the uh, bottom unit is defrosting, one thing I did notice was that the... Uh, refrigerator made a kind of a noise, like a noise, and 
Sometimes that's going to be a damper control, so what you do is you just pull down and out, and then this guy regulates cold air coming from the freezer into the refrigerator. And there's a motor that makes that go up and down, up and down like that. So that unit also might be busted. It's hard to know at the moment. It's like a $100 control, but anyway, uh, we will revisit that if it's necessary. Okay, now that this is all disassembled, just wanted to point out, and now that I finally have it in landscape mode, that this is the thermostore. This is basically sending information to the brain, the, uh, the board. Uh, this actual refrigerator doesn't have like a timer. Like older refrigerators have a defrost timer that just comes on at specific times of the day. This has the thermostat, right? So this is here. This has already been replaced. Just wanted to let you know that it, it comes in like this in the mail. This is the clip that goes onto the coil, which you can see there. And what you do is you just sort of clip the old ones off here and here, strip the wires on the old wires, and then uh, the new one comes pre-stripped. So you just coil your wires together, put a cap on it, and as suggested to me, you put a uh, some uh, black tape on it to just keep some of the moisture out condensation, etc, etc. So when you're ready to test whether your thermostat works or not, you're going to have to unfortunately put this whole unit back together again. So your thermostore has to go, this guy right here, the wires have to go through this part here and then it just clips in to those holes. The ice maker, if you don't have it like me, there's just sort of like a cover plate. So you have to push this guy this unit through here and then clip on your cover plate. So let's get that done. Uh, just when you're taking this thing off, it's kind of a pita to do this and this guy at the same time, or even put it back together at the same time. So this panel should just kind of hang low and kind of forward. And then for this guy, you, you basically just pull it out and a little bit out a little bit to the right because it and when you put it back in there's a little slot hook tab thing that goes in and then snaps into place so you slide it in and then push and then it snaps into place this one is similar one of the tabs hooks under and then the other one just goes in straight then you have your four screws to replace so we'll do that next okay so if you're not sure if it's really your thermostat that's causing your defrost problems, it could be the uh, wire, the defrosting wire in the back, which wraps around the uh, coils, then uh, you may want to just get the side mounts on for the bottom door, which is pretty easy. It's just three screws on each side. There are four holes on these uh, mounts, but uh, it's probably just for a different model. Uh, and don't even bother with the other um, shelving units just quite just yet. And then close it up. And just to let you know, I've removed this and tested it out. And it doesn't seem to be moving up and down at the required three cycles a minute. It's supposed to flap up and down real slow it seems to get stuck so that's a unit I'm going to replace too so that's very easy really you just take that cover off like I showed you before and then you're going to get a replacement unclip this part pull this whole thing out there's some like taps here and here and just the whole unit just comes out and then you snap the other one into place just like a Lego set Okay, so um, thinking about this a little more, if this thing doesn't really open and close on a consistent basis, and I've had like my yogurt froze and my spinach like turned black, uh, that means that the 
the flap was stuck open. So this guy, when I plugged it in, it came up and then kind of got stuck. Okay, so it should be closing and opening. So what I did is I just left this tab open here in the back, one of the tabs open, so that some of the cold air can come in and cool down the refrigerator, because if this thing gets shut closed, I'm not sure how that affects the fan unit and all the sensors uh, in the computer, the ECU, so I just stuck it on there, but I left a little bit of a gap in there so cold air can kind of flow through, regardless of whether it gets stuck or clo closed open. Okay, I've uh, buttoned up all the trays. I have to say, this tray right here is the biggest pain in my butt ever. This um, roller system on the track has to fit on the roller teeth, of course, but then this has to go underneath this plastic thing. Tolerances are kind of tight and you really have to work it, and the big problem is in the back you have to of course, of course get that track in this little slot that you know made a horrible sound at the beginning when I took it out. It has to go in at an angle and then it snaps into place. And then this side it just it just worked. It's a little bit like your uh, sunshade in your car, you know the ones that fold up and to a little circle. If you just don't think about it, that just kind of happens. Anyway, the last thing to do, of course, is I turned it on and say a prayer, pray to the appliance gods, and hopefully this works because this is a cheap fix compared to the uh, actual you know, heating coil or any other thing like the ECU in the back. That's like 330 bucks. No way am I going to do that. I'll check in in this little bit. I'm in luck. The new damper came in, and when I plugged it in, the damper went up very smoothly. It didn't just crunch like that, like the gear was stripped. So all you have to do is just put a screwdriver right there and just jimmy it open. It just comes open pretty easily. And then there are these two tabs that I just talked about before. Since this is the new unit, the styrofoam goes on. Where's my cover? You put two, two screws back here. You're pretty smart. I don't need to explain all that stuff. And then once that goes on and you screw it on, this just snaps into place. You put it in the slots and just go BAM! Like that. Okay, it's all pretty clunky and plasticky, but hey, it's cheaper than paying some guy to do it. I mean, this whole job probably would have cost 800 bucks, or not, if not more. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, aunties. Uh, refrigerators had a chance to uh, cool off overnight, and uh, one thing I noticed is that it does not uh, run the fan does not run all night long. That was something I noticed a year ago. So uh, things must be working. Well, no snapping or cracking from the damper. All the produce and everything. The milk is cold. The to touch. The freezer. Come down here. You can see down there the uh, evap coils are not iced over. Uh, there's no frost or crusty ice uh, falling out of it, so I think we're good to go. Uh, fingers crossed, but I think this one worked. I'll give you the link to some uh, parts companies. For those parts, it's a really easy fix. It's just really unscrewing a lot of bolts and uh, like, you know, just like almost like taking a, a model apart and putting it back together again. So, hope this works.